She's reminding black voters to go to the polls and vote for Adlai Stevenson, but she's calling on behalf of the mayor, who's running for office today. As the ballots are being counted for Adlai Stevenson and Richard Elrod, this election could be a test to see if Mayor Washington can count on the black vote for next year's mayoral election. If the candidates endorsed by the mayor do well, I think you could conclude that uh, the mayor is in fact having a positive influence on the candidacies of others. If the candidates do not do quite as well, you might attribute that to several factors. Washington allies say that if the Democrats win, the mayor wins too. And if they don't, well... They don't want it to be seen as a test of, of, of Harold's ability to deliver. Bill Sampson is a political expert who says that whatever supporters may say, the mayor is in a no-win position. Got the Vidroliak Burke forces out there trying to push the election of Stevenson and Elrod. And if, if, if uh, Stevenson does very well, then they're going to take credit. And if he does poorly, then they're going to blame Harold. That's why the mayor never went all out in registering votes for Stevenson, says Sampson. That's why the big drive will begin after today's election and before the mayoral election next spring. Of course, friends of the mayor, like Alderman Tim Evans and Danny Davis, defend him. I don't recall the mayor suggesting to anybody that they not go out and register, or that they not be actively involved with the process of voter registration. In any case, one thing is clear. The real election campaign isn't over. It's just beginning. Tom Grenius, WMED News. You can tell the cold weather is starting because car engines aren't. This morning brought the first snow of the season and local service stations say they've had a busy day starting up stalled cars. And the weather dipped down a little, even though a barrier has been starting in the summertime, a person thinks it's, it's well, but then when it gets cold, you know, the, cr the cold cranking out, you know, it drops, you see. And so if the barriers are old or sort of may have a short in it, then when it gets cold, then uh, they tend to have a problem. Ed says he's in his tow truck most of the day, on the scene to lend stranded motorists a helping hand, or jumper cable. He also gives free do-it-yourself lessons with the job. Uh, it's a safety precaution if you don't want to blow up the battery, if you don't really know, it's to just use the frame of the car and see a spark. But some cars need more than a battery charge in this winter weather. This car has a faulty starter and will have to be towed to a service station for repair. It often takes a cold spell to snap a faltering auto part. But not all cars have to end up in the service garage. Auto experts say owners can take definite steps to prevent or at least detect potential problems. Well, everybody should flush their, uh, well, they should go by their owner's guide um, originally, but they should flush their cooling systems and install new antifreeze at least every other year. Um, sometimes it's recommended with heavy driving to do it once a year. Remember that Chicago is considered severe driving. You should uh, change your engine oil and put in a good 5W30 uh, multi-grade oil or a uh, synthetic oil, which is, a, which is getting really popular now in the winter weather. So if you want to avoid a trip from the street to the shop, that's advice you might want to take seriously. Tom Grenius, WMED News. Good morning, Butterball Turkey Talk Line. May I help you? They're here to answer your questions on how to prepare your holiday turkey. We'll go from buying it in the store all the way to serving it and carving it at the dining room table. This is the sixth year for the Turkey Talk Line. So far this month, they've handled 6,000 calls and expect more than 50,000 by Christmas. And that would be, how are you going to be cooking the turkey? Uh, would you be doing it in the oven, the microwave? Computer terminals keep track of the tough questions, such as what to do with leftovers, but the Turkey Talk Line manual is the ultimate authority when it comes to the answers. Houston, Texas. Nice and warm down there, right? Calls come in from around the country. Okay, well, what is it that your wife fixes? Men call, too, sometimes secretly, to get some advice or to pass some hints along to their wives. How many times in the last five years has your wife done the Thanksgiving turkey? But whoever the caller and whatever the problem, if it means averting a kitchen disaster or simply making a Thanksgiving meal more pleasant, the Turkey Talk line is ready to help. 
The turkey talk lines are going to be busy well beyond Thanksgiving until Christmas Eve. In the meantime, these turkeys aren't talking. They're just hoping they'll make it to see Christmas Day. Tom Grenius, WMED News. News 31's Washington reporter Tom Grenius has this update on the Clean Air Bill. Almost nobody in Vermont doubts the effects of acid rain. One look at Camel's Hump tells the story. The causes can be traced to the kind of pollutants coming from these smokestacks in the Midwest. Sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, and other gases can cross hundreds of miles, carrying their devastation to the Northeast. This week, lawmakers in Washington introduced new legislation to deal with the problem. Today, Democratic Senator George Mitchell of Maine presented a bill similar to the one Vermont's Republican Senator Stafford introduced Tuesday. Basically, the bill would not only control coal emissions from the Midwest, but all 50 states. It would also control exhaust pollution from cars and trucks as well. Specifically, both versions of the Clean Air Bill would impose new emission standards for power plants and new emission standards for motor vehicles. But Stafford's version is more sweeping. Vermont does have a considerable uh, problem with acid rain. And the bill which I'm introducing uh, will cover all of the aspects that uh, science now tells us are part of acid rain. Stafford's bill would require vapor retention systems in all new cars to filter hydrocarbon fumes, and the auto industry isn't happy. We think it's a seriously flawed bill. This bill would not result in any perceptible air quality benefits. Power companies don't like the bill either. What would happen is you would have an increase in electricity rates across the board, not just residential, but also commercial and industrial. And the bill faces yet a final challenge, Senate Majority Leader Robert Byrd. His state of West Virginia is dependent on coal burning industry, and he's against both bills. Tom Grenius, News 31, Washington. Republicans stood and cheered while Democrats sat in silence as reaction to the President's State of the Union address split down party lines. Nowhere was this clearer than in his explanation of the Iran-Contra scandal, and senators from New England were no different. Well, I think he made a good speech. Uh, he was forceful, he looked well, uh, and he said about the things you'd expect. I wasn't surprised by it. He took responsibility for the mistakes that may have been made in Iran, and I don't know what more you can uh, do. The best thing the president uh, could have done would have been simply have told the truth, laid out exactly why we traded arms for hostages, why we paid ransom to a terrorist nation like Iran. He didn't do that. Reagan said he regretted the mistake in Iran because it didn't work, but he defended the initiative and said it was time now to look ahead. Much is at stake here, and the nation and the world are watching to see if we go forward together in the national interest or if we let partisanship weaken us. But it may not be that easy. I'm afraid that partisanship indicates that uh, the Democrats will keep this Iran issue alive as long as they can. But Warren Rudman is on the Senate Select Committee investigating the Iran-Contra scandal. He welcomes the competitive spirit. This is not... Uh, uh, tea and uh, cracker society. It's the United States Congress and it gets a little rough sometimes, but I thought the president handled it very well. Opinions on the president's performance differ, but one thing is clear. Ronald Reagan's last two years in office will most likely be his toughest, overshadowed by an Iran-Contra crisis that just won't go away. Tom Grenius, News 31, Washington. The commission has been looking into the Iran-Contra affair, and as News 31 Washington correspondent Tom Grenius reports, the dominoes may be about to fall. Under the, Constitution. the Tower Commission finally released its historic 300-page report today detailing White House involvement in the Iran-Contra scandal, and Commission Chairman John Tower made it clear that the President can't escape blame. Yes, the President made mistakes. I think that's, that's very plain English. The President did make mistakes. A lot of his subordinates made mistakes. I might note that every president has made mistakes from time to time, some of far greater consequence than the ones that uh, President Reagan has made. 
The president's biggest mistake, it seems, was delegating too much authority to subordinates. The report says his advisors failed him and that they failed to follow procedure. The report criticized the Iran initiative as an arms for hostages deal. It says the president was poorly advised and never fully informed about what was going on. And it blamed him for not taking the initiative and keeping tabs on his advisors. That includes Chief of Staff Donald Regan, whose resignation is expected tomorrow. But Senator Leahy of Vermont says that won't clear the president. The White House will try to uh, give the impression that that takes care of the whole problem. Well, it, it takes care of only part of the problem. The president has still got to s say that he will not allow amateur hour, that he will involve himself, and that he will take personal responsibility for his actions. This was the, the president warned against instant analysis of the report and the said he'll address the nation next week. Tom Grenius, News 31, Washington. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Grenius with the latest news roundup. Britain's Prince Charles helicoptered over the ferry that capsized Friday night off the coast of Belgium. He then thanked the Belgian government for its help in saving some 400 passengers from the disaster that claimed 53 lives. 81 are still missing. Another potential disaster was averted in Cuba when a hijacker was shot to death by a policeman, but only after he threw a grenade that hurt 13 airline passengers. The hijacker had demanded to be flown to the U.S. The president reportedly is ready to say he ignored advice from Secretary of State Schultz and Defense Secretary Weinberger against selling arms to Iran. Schultz and Weinberger came under fire from the Tower Commission for distancing themselves from the Iran-Contra affair. And it looks like Ronald Reagan's first Secretary of State will be running for president next year. Alexander Haig today said he'll announce his intentions on March 24th. Haig says the race is wide open. In the skies over Southern California last night, three men were killed and two more injured in a fiery crash of two police helicopters. The choppers were chasing a stolen car when they collided about 40 miles southeast of Los Angeles. The car thief has been caught and charged with murder. Well, get ready to put those winter coats in mothballs. Temperatures are expected to climb into the upper 60s this afternoon, and we should reach the mid-70s tomorrow under sunny skies. Join us for all the news, weather, and sports at 6 o'clock. I'm Tom Grenius. Have a good afternoon. Good afternoon, I'm Tom Grenius with the latest news roundup. Britain's Prince Charles helicoptered over the ferry that capsized Friday night off the coast of Belgium. He then thanked the Belgian government for its help in saving some 400 passengers from the disaster that claimed 53 lives. 81 are still missing. Another potential disaster was averted in Cuba when a hijacker was shot to death by a policeman, but only after he threw a grenade that hurt 13 airline passengers. The hijacker had demanded to be flown to the U.S. The president reportedly is ready to say he ignored advice from Secretary of State Schultz and Defense Secretary Weinberger against selling arms to Iran. Schultz and Weinberger came under fire from the Tower Commission for distancing themselves from the Iran-Contra affair. And it looks like Ronald Reagan's first Secretary of State will be running for president next year. Alexander Haig today said he'll announce his intentions on March 24th. Haig says the race is wide open. In the skies over Southern California last night, three men were killed and two more injured in a fiery crash of two police helicopters. The choppers were chasing a stolen car when they collided about 40 miles southeast of Los Angeles. The car thief has been caught and charged with murder. Well, get ready to put those winter coats in mothballs. Temperatures are expected to climb into the upper 60s this afternoon, and we should reach the mid-70s tomorrow under sunny skies. Join us for all the news, weather, and sports at 6 o'clock. I'm Tom Grenius. Have a good afternoon.